Welcome to this new how-to. In this how-to we will look at the autopilot from our Cessna 172 Skyhawk. Um, to do that we're gonna fly from Rotterdam Airport then fly around across the south part of the Netherlands and then uh, again make a landing on the same airport. Uh, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna select the airport and you can see it's still in the history so select it from here and the runway we're gonna use is runway 24. So we're gonna make sure that it's set as the departure, which it already is. Um, one of the things uh, you can do in Flight Simulator is use ILS. And that's also something we're gonna discuss in this uh, how-to. So what we need to do is we need to find out which frequency the ILS uh, beacon is using and to do that you need to switch on the additional navigation points here so you need to switch on uh, navates at least but you can also switch on airspaces and fix an air and off position report and what you will see now is several waypoints are being added one of them is RSV but on this one there's the ROS now what you need to keep in mind is that if you want to land on the in this case on uh, runway 6 which is here you need to have the uh, frequency of the waypoint or the DME channel because it's a distance measurement equipment channel which allows the airplane to measure the distance uh, from the, the waypoints and the altitude you always need to select the one at the end of the runway so if I want to land on runway 6 I need to use this waypoint. If I want to land on runway 24, I need to use this waypoint. And let me select this one just as an example. So what you will see here on the right side is you see the nav 8, which gives us the long latitude, the altitude of the uh, waypoint, the type, in this case a localizer DME, and the frequency. So if you want to land on runway 24 then you need to make a note of this frequency that's one option because you can do it from the map but you can also do it from the aircraft itself and that's what i will explain uh, in a few minutes so for now i will leave it and um i will leave the uh we, we can select the rs but sometimes when you select the runway itself which is very close to the uh, to the waypoint or to the uh, localizer you can see that it doesn't pop up here with the nav information so let's leave that for now so our destination airport will also be uh, Rotterdam however we want to land on runway 6 and that's just for fun because we want to leave from here then fly around here and then make a turn and then land on runway 06. you can see both are same length right because it's either uh well the difference is only the uh position so if you uh arrive via this south part of the netherlands you can land on runway 06. if you arrive from the north part of the netherlands you can use uh, runway 24. And on the frequencies tab, we can see all the frequencies which we can use to communicate with the airport. So we're gonna switch from direct GPS to low altitude airways. The reason we do that is that now the uh, air traffic control will guide us how we need to fly, which altitudes we need to uh, fly, etc. And that makes it a little bit more feasible for the, uh, the autopilot uh, when using it we will leave arrival set to direct and approach set to automatic so we're going to zoom in a bit and we're going to add some additional waypoints so the first waypoint we're going to add is a ps and we can simply click on add now we're going to go to std followed by hsd and you can see that there are a few different waypoint types right so if we click on show legend it will explain us what it is so in this case uh, both ps and std are called ndbs and those are ndbs without the dme functionality without the distance measurement equipment so it doesn't allow you to measure the distance etc 
So now HSD, which is located here, that's a different one. That's called a VOR channel, right? Besides these, we've got several other options. We've got the fix, the iron off and the custom. Uh, of course, we got some, some other options here like the traffic, but let's, let's leave it for now. Uh, so we're gonna fly uh, from Rotterdam to PS to STD, then to HSD. And well, we can add uh, Harmstead air Airfield if you want, but it's not strictly necessary. So, well, let's do it just for fun. So we're gonna edit, but just to make our flight uh, a little bit further. So what you will see during the flight is what we will do is instead of going to this uh, airport, we will probably get permission or instructions to use uh, another route to approach the airport. And uh, those routes, are here and those is what we call the fix and the fix will guide us from Masos to uh, Otfield or no I think it's EH254 in uh, the case of Rotterdam and then will guide us to the other fixes and then we'll make sure that we are I would say almost well, not almost that we're in, in the center of the, the runway. So if we will fly this, this route, it will make sure that we can use or intercept, as we call it, the ILS and the localizer, and then can make a smooth landing on Rotterdam Airport. So we're ready, we're all set. We selected the correct airplane, we set the from. We are departing from runway 24, uh, direct. We, we don't select any of the other, other options here. And uh, what those other options are, simply if you would select this option, it will fly a certain pattern when you are, um, I would say, when you're airborne, right? So instead of direct, it will simply say, okay, hey, fly straight away, or you can use one of the other waypoints, which are defined here. Um, I'm saying waypoints, I think those are waypoints, um, but we, we can you can check it if you, you want. Um, but officially they are called waypoints because they're part of this list, right? So let's leave them for now to direct arrivals. We left, left so again, we let set to uh, to the direct and the approach to automatic. So we're gonna press the fly button. So keep in mind that since this video is recorded during the evening hours, the airplane will also fly in the dark. So it's not a challenge. Uh, I added some additional scenery to, to the Netherlands because uh, I like it. Um, by default, the, the air or the scenery from the Netherlands is pretty empty. There are a lot of uh, Dutch guys who are developing scenery. That's really cool because there's now some industry. Uh, Rotterdam has some more buildings, some bridges which were missing were added to the, uh, to the scenery. And the same is applicable to cities like uh, The Hague, Delft, Amsterdam and the northern part of the Netherlands where some more scenery is being added to make it even more realistic. So while we're waiting, uh, you can see our uh, Cessna 172 uh, already has a picture. Um, so let's, let's wait a few seconds uh, until the game is loaded and see how busy it is. Because normally during the, bus during the evening hours, at least during the EMEA business hours, you can see a lot of, I would say, uh, colleagues from the fly sims uh, flying around. So let's see how busy it is tonight. So the plan again is to use the autopilot. So we're gonna go airborne manually like we always do. And then we're gonna use the autopilot functionalities. We're gonna use different functionalities from the autopilot and I will explain them how, how you can use them and uh, when to use them. And the rest of the flight will be mainly explaining the autopilot and using the autopilot functionalities. It's always a waiting part, which, which takes very long, right? So loading the game, loading the sceneries, always takes longer than you expected. And that's the hard thing about recording. So I will add some additional uh, timer codes so you can skip this if you want to directly go to the takeoff. 
so it's easy for you so you don't have to watch this uh, loading of the game because you probably are uh, familiar with this screen and you know that you can't do much uh, instead, instead of uh, waiting so right there's nothing else you can do unfortunately And my experience is that it sometimes goes a little bit quicker, sometimes it takes a little bit longer. Probably has to do with uh, the additional stuff and the additional airplanes which it needs to load and uh, the information it needs to collect from the server. So there it is. So this is Rotterdam Airport. This is also a modified version, right? It's not the default version from uh, Flight Simulator. Uh, someone in the Netherlands also built a scenery pack for that and that will improve the, uh, the airport a lot. So let's click on uh, ready to fly and then I will first show you how to uh, discover the uh, ILS channels. So to do that, what you need to do is you need to um, make, sure, make sure that the throttle is down. You need to press uh, the FMS button and then scroll to the right. Then you've got the, uh, well, let me do that again for you. Then by default, it will show you the navigation map, but you can also go to nearest. And when you go to nearest, you can press the FMS button and then you will see this cursor blinking. Now if you press the frequency here, so let me zoom in a bit, frequency here, then you will have an additional list which you can, uh, let's say, navigate to. And as you can see, there are multiple frequencies here, including the ones for ILS Runway 6, that's 109.10, and ILS Runway 24, 110.90. So in this case, we're, we do want to use the 109.10. So let's uh, move away from this view because we don't need it uh, for now. We'll zoom out a bit. And what you then need to do is you need to go to the uh, navigation uh, screen. So let me, oh, sorry, no, to, the na nav, to the navigation radios. And the first thing you need to do is you need to swap. And if you swap, you can uh, modify the uh, navigation radio which is using and for those who paid attention it was 109.10 if I'm correct let me double check because I made a note on that yeah it is and once you did that you need to press the button again because this is the active one and what you see now is that it activated the ROS localizer. So that's fine for now. We're not going to use it. We're going to use it during uh, the landing. So before we take off, we need to make sure that um, our altimeter is set correct. You can press the letter B for that. You can see, hey, we're now at oh, minus 10, right? The Netherlands is a little bit beso be below sea level, so that's expected. You can see the uh, waypoint where we're currently at and the waypoint which we're flying to let me zoom in a bit for you the distance and the bearing so that's all fine for now so before we take off we're gonna adjust the uh, the altitude and we're gonna set it to 2500 you can do that either using the knob on the, this side or the knob on the uh, left side right this knob and what you will see is when you turn the knob, it will change this value. So that's fine. We change it to 2500 feet. Nice altitude. We set the CDI to GPS for now. You will see that we need to change it later on when making the ILS approach. But for now, uh, GPS is fine. Uh, and then we're going to take off. So taxi lights are already off. So that's good. So we reset the view. Gonna remove the parking brakes and then we're gonna increase the throttle. Uh, 
And as you can already see, there are some uh, other airplanes also in the air. Uh, you can see a C-25C. Uh, A20N and another one which is not having an identification. So we're and we're airborne. So if we now look at the left side, uh, you can see that there are some adjustments made to the airport. So it's a little bit too early. So You can see that by default it does not have a lot of coloring, but now it's, it has the official flight tower, it has the parking spots, it has some nice uh, letters on the building. And now we're airborne, we can do two things, right? Either we can fly by hand by using the joystick, or you can activate the autopilot. And the act autopilot can be activated either by pressing the buttons on the left side or uh, on this right screen. Both work the same, so we're gonna switch on autopilot. And as soon as we did that, you can see that it activated the option here, AP, and it says PIT, which means that it's climbing and it's the pitch. So it will keep a certain, I uh, would say, climb rate until it reaches the, um, the altitude of 2500. So we're also gonna switch on the, the flight director. And as soon as you switch on the flight director, you can see some additional lines being added, right? So let me switch it off again and on. And that will make sure that we're continuing the climb rate uh, because that's necessary. We need to follow the climb rate. And the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna enable the nav button. Since it's set to GPS, it will follow uh, the uh, navigation which we configured earlier on. So if you enable it, what will happen is, let me zoom out a bit, it will make some strange turns. Why? Because we didn't follow the, per the pink line, so it needs to make the corrections so we can fly straight to the waypoint which we configured in our flight plan. So what are other options? Well, there's several other options. One is the heading one, and the heading one will uh, help you to fly a certain direction right in this case we use the nav button because we want to use the uh, the waypoints but if you fly vfr it could be that you want to fly a direction of let's say uh, 10 degrees what you then do is switch the buttons here and let me do that because it doesn't have any effect and you will see that the heading is now set to 10 degrees so let's set it to uh, 244 and can show you uh, what will happen if we set it to uh, 244. So you can see that it continues to climb. And the reason why it does that is because we didn't say you need to hold the altitude, right? So there's one option where you can say, okay, I'm gonna hold the altitude at 2500. In that case, it will uh, stay on that altitude. When you press the L2 button, even if you bypass uh, the, uh, the threshold or the configured L2, it will reset the value to the L2 which, was, uh, which the airplane was at that specific moment where you, when you press the button and will uh, round it up to above. So it will, in this case, it rounds up to 2,800 uh, so 2, feet. So, there are some other options, right? So um, let me see if the, uh, the HC cancelled us, right? We didn't follow the uh, rules. So let me tune and let me say retry the last action plan. Skip Paul approach Cessna Alpha Sierra X ray at Golf Sierra Alpha 6 miles. The last miles action plan, the last I have all plans. Too busy uh, with my work sometimes. So it says, hey, you need to set the score, and if you want to do it manually, you can do that uh, by pressing the, uh, so let me first confirm. You can do that by pressing the uh, XPDR button, then the code button, and then follow in the uh, number. Uh, once you did that, uh, don't forget to uh, switch it to, uh, what was the 
6, 3, 3, 4. So now I delete something. So 3, 4. And then I say back. Uh, make sure that it's set to on. Uh, so the flight instructor, the flight controls know what you need to do and in addition to that it said hey you need to increase your speed or your altitude to 6000 feet so we're gonna change the altitude and what you will see is due to the fact that we press the alt halt button it won't do much right so what we're gonna do is we're gonna change the uh, we're gonna increase the altitude by pressing the vs button and then nose up what will happen in that case is that you will see that numbers are changing here but also the numbers are changing here so now it's the mode is set to VS and the uh, altitude is set or the climb rate is set to 500 feet per minute and we're gonna gonna wait it says it's clear to STD and uh, you might ask yourself, hey, why is the airplane flying to STD and not following the uh, purple line? Well, that's because the GPS will follow the waypoint. It will not follow the strict lines which were set by the, uh, way, by the um, flight plan. So we're climbing 500 feet per minute to 6000 feet. That's fine. So now we used already a few buttons, right? We used the AP, which is the, I would say, the master switch. We used the flight director, which sets the, uh, I would say, pitch rate to a default value. We didn't use the uh, heading one yet because we're not using it uh, in this flight. We used the nav button because we're following the uh, navigation points. We described the alt button, the altitude, which sets it to a certain threshold or a certain altitude, I should say. Uh, VNV mode um, that's called the VNAV uh, mode and let me explain it a little bit further but for that we need to go to the right screen because we need to look at the flight plan so in the flight plan you can uh, see the altitudes in this case PS uh, to SCD we need to be at least at the uh, 3550 feet then to HSD 6000 and we will continue to 6000 if you set the or enable the VNV mode it will um, keep in mind those I would say uh, altitudes and will climb and descend uh, where needed uh, personally I'm not using it a lot but you can use it then we've got the approach button and the approach mode is something we're going to use during the ILS landing right so you do during the ILS we press the approach button at a certain moment and then it will intercept the glide scope and we'll make sure that we're uh, landing to the correct spot uh, back course um, we're not going to use it uh, during this flight um, let me see back, back course we didn't use, I didn't use this one a lot, so let me look what it was because I forgot it, of course. Um, I thought the back mode. The back course mode, uh, in this case. Uh, now, we, now, the, now it says that we need to descend to 2000 feet. So let, let's do that first. I think, I think the, the air traffic control is also a little bit lost in what we're doing. Uh, so let's descend. What was it? 2000 feet. I think it's also a little bit lost. So to make the descent, we need to change the uh, enable the VS mode again, and then say, okay, we're gonna descend uh, with uh, four, five hundred feet per minute. Which is fine. 
and let me continue my uh, my story where were we about the um, back course mode um, that means that normally you will press the approach buttons we just discussed but in some scenarios you're approaching the airport from I would say the opposite side in that case you can use the uh, back course which will um, make sure that you're learning correctly so actually it's the I would say inverted way uh, if I understood it correctly uh, based on the manual right so I will put a link to the manual of this airplane <coughs> in the uh, description below the video because the Garmin G G1000 uh, cockpit reference guide contains a lot of interesting information also some examples of how you can approach uh, what buttons mean etc uh, I read it uh, or, or I'm using it as a reference material a lot it helps me understand uh, what the airplane or how the airplane works so let's uh, reset the uh, altitude or let's read the altimeter so the altitudes which are defined in the fly plan um, those are I would say uh, a guideline it could be, could be that air traffic control decides to give you different uh, altitudes due to the fact that it's really busy. Uh, in that case, they will give you different altitudes like uh, what the, just has happened. Oh, one button. So let's switch off the flight plan mode. zoom a bit out so we're almost at HSD as you can see well almost we're not even half past it but we already made um, with, uh, with, with, made some I would say air traffic or some air time we fly we fly via PS then to STD and now we're on this on our way to uh, HSD so If you look outside you don't see a lot right <laughs> because it's in the middle of the night and that's a pity right you can better fly during the day or during the uh, let's say start of the evening because then you've got a nice sunshine uh, but in our case uh, we will leave it as is I think it's still the you see the GPS still switched on our the uh, autopilot switched on or descending with 500 feet per minute with the Alt S which is the um, select mode and select mode means that we're that it's not holding the specific altitude but it's still on its way to the uh, altitude which we configured so now we need to contact the different radio set we need to contact uh, Amsterdam Center, so let's do that. And what you can see is that when we're closing the altitude, it will start to, uh, I would say, go on and off, and the plane will automatically adjust uh, the decent rate. Amsterdam Center, Cessna Alpha, Sierra X-ray, Golf Sierra Alpha, 2,900 feet. So it says the altimeter, right? So if the altimeter, which is displayed here, is different, then press the B key to set it to the correct uh, uh, to the correct uh, altimeter, because else you are flying an incorrect altitude, and then if you're not following the the guidelines from the uh, uh, air traffic control, they will cancel your I your IFR plan, and you you can retry it, of course, but you better listen to them. It says here Chesna, uh, the no call number Amsterdam Center to EH251 uh, as planned. So we're not gonna do that right now. We can do that, and the way or the reason they tell us to do that is because we need to fly uh, the official route or the official approach to the air uh, to the runway. And while talking about that, right, so how can you uh, 
change that or how can you configure the approach well let's do that while we're uh, fly continue to fly so on the uh, right side of both screens you can hit the procedures button and that will bring up these options so you can say hey select approach like the rival select departure in this case we want to approach the airport so we're gonna hit the enter key and it will bring up this window so the airport which we're gonna land is Rotterdam each EHRD it's a public airport uh, approach channel is not defined yet and we can change the uh, approach by clicking on enter and then scrolling down in this case to ILS 6 we press enter again and then the most frustrating thing you need to press it again and you need to press enter again and here's where you can define the approach right so you can either select uh, the one which is called out here in this case EH251 uh, <coughs> but normally it will refer you to to muscles and uh, once you're at muscles you can um, you can fly that specific route which will eventually also will visit EH251 which will bring you uh, at the end to the runway of Rotterdam Airport runway 06 so we're gonna press enter Whoop. I'm gonna push the button again and that's something you need to get used to because you need to push it a few times and it will show us the uh, the waypoints which we're gonna visit. So we're gonna go to Maslow's EH254, two times P, PS, then EH251, and then runway six. Now there are two things which you can do. You can either select uh, load or you can press activate. If you press load, it will uh, load the air, load the uh, the destination or not the destination. Sorry, it will load the flight plan and then we'll make sure that we're making the correct approach but you see that when we're loading the airplane or when loading and activating it it will do something strange so in our case it uh, well i need to zoom out it will make us weird first, first we'll fly back to std then it will make a weird turn here and then we'll go to muscles so sometimes it's better to just wait before uh, just wait until you uh, visit it uh, I would say waypoint and then press that button because else it makes these kind of weird uh, behaviors so what we can do however is we can use the uh, heading button so if we press the FPL button we should be able to identify the heading of muscles which is 289 so let's go to the uh, left side or use this button but in our case we go to the left side because it's easier and we're gonna say two what was it two eight nine and we're gonna uh, disable the nav button and enable the heading button and as soon as we did that you see that the airplane starts to make a left turn and then we'll fly to muscles because the airplane will in case of the nav mode will continue to use this flight path until it reached the muscles uh, in this case it was uh, one of the fixed uh, waypoints uh, which was configured in a you know a flight plan so it was not configured in a flight plan even right the last one we which we configured was uh, was the airport in uh, in Harmstede so And if you're really lost, you can always ask, hey, uh, air traffic control, uh, can, you, uh, can you tell me uh, to where, where I need to fly to? In this case, at EH251, uh, right? So if you would go to EH251, uh, you need to set the altitude or the, um, the heading to 260 or 360, sorry. So that means that uh, EH251 uh, is probably somewhere here because uh, yeah. So let's first acknowledge Continue to EH251, turning and following So let's see if we can uh, find it Alpha. So 250 is here, 254 is here Whoa. 
not sure where it is. I thought it was somewhere around here. Uh, let's press the button and then we will. Two, five, one. I don't see it. Well, in this case, never mind. Let's leave it. We're gonna fly to Marsos, then fly to EH241, and then make a flight to PS, etc. So we're gonna press the button again. Oh, sorry, already pressed the button again. So that's fine. And what you can see is right that. As soon as you press load or activate, it will uh, add some additional waypoints. So this was the end route, with the waypoint which we configured for flight, and this is the approach which we need to take to to reach uh, ILS uh, number six. The only thing I hope is that it really does its thing and says okay hey you reached the uh, muscles correctly because i hit in the past i also had it while configuring it like this that it still want to return to this point before it hit it uh before be, before it marked the muscles as completed so let's see what it uh what it now will do because the distance increases so I'm a little bit afraid that it will do it a little bit differently as we expected so we can do either two things right what we can do is we can continue our flight to Mars or see if it changes uh, because one of the the things I found out is that um, when you're normally in a flight plan right so you can uh, change the uh, the active lag by pressing the active active lag button here but when you go to the approach you can't change the active lag I'm not sure if it's a bug or if that's that's normal but um, so that's one of the things which you need to keep in mind so let's see uh, what will happen I'm not sure what the uh, what the autopilot is doing. It's making weird moves, right? You can, as you can see. So let's press the uh, alt button. Switch off the V mode. Switch on the V mode in this case, and then let's increase the the altitude. what the airplane is doing it looks like to warn us that it doesn't like what we just did so it also looks like that it lost completely track of what it's doing because it says uh, PS is uh, more than 3,000 uh, nautical miles away, which isn't isn't correct, definitely. Well, I'm not sure what it does. So, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna take some measurements because it's also doing weird with the speed, as you can see. So, we're gonna switch off the autopilot and we're gonna take control ourselves. Speed is really, really low. As you can 
Sí. like it wants to force us to, to fly the official route so let's first make sure we're getting some more speed and then fly the official route because switch on the FLC mode you can see directly here and then we're gonna switch on the autopilot so let's see what it does Whoa, it goes completely crazy you see so it's completely lost And then that's one of the things I found out in, in, in Flight Simulator, right? Sometimes the autopilot simply goes completely crazy. So we're gonna switch off everything in that case. So we're gonna and then we're gonna set ads. Switch it on, switch that one on. And sometimes you need to leave the airplane or the autopilot doing its stuff because that's also something I found out that it sometimes is uh, trying to level off and does its thing. To be sometimes a bit careful with it so not try it when you're on a low altitude at the end it should come fine so let, let's see what the what it does yeah so now it's happy again so we're flying at correct speed so you can see that even if you enable the autopilot you sometimes need to make corrective actions because for some reason it still goes crazy uh, some in some scenarios I will see mode on although it's not strictly necessary because we're already flying on the correct uh, altitude and then we're gonna fly in still still trying to figure out why it's displaying these uh, weird values here because these doesn't they don't make sense uh, to me currently Let's see if it auto corrects uh, these. Else will be a very long flight, I can already guarantee you, and that will be a long video. You can see a lot of other colleague flight sim pilots are here. So now the distance is decreasing, so that's fine. So tip from this video, don't uh, don't enable the option uh, or don't set a fly plan uh, when you, uh, I would say, when you're half between one waypoint and another one because that will as you can see it will make very weird turns in most cases it's better to do it after you uh, visit the waypoint then uh, load the approach which will prevent these uh, kind of issues So let's set it to the correct approach. I'll 
as runway 6. It's weird, right? So it's not there. So what we can do also is we can use the STD one. So we use option three. Let's see if it allows it. It allows it. That's that's easier, right? So. See that it changes directly. Now we need to go here and so you can see now it's a little bit more friendly, right? So this is what you would expect. So now we're going to uh, STD, then we're flying to EH two five one, which we now also found. Maybe I probably overlooked it. Can't imagine that. Then we will fly to PS EH251 and then to Rotterdam Airport. So that's fine. So we can uh, can hide the, the uh, flight plan. You can see it still shows us the weird numbers here. Don't, again, they don't make sense. Uh, so don't pay too much attention to them uh, because they're already in the view. So they can't be that, that far away. Mission again because it looks like they are ignoring us. Well, in this case, we're gonna accept it as uh, no news is good news, so we're gonna continue and fly our own flight. Uh, normally, you shouldn't do that, of course, but. And the bad thing about it is that it also doesn't tell you, uh, okay, what's the kind of approach you need to take, what are the different things you need to change, the altitudes, because normally the air traffic control will guide you, okay, hey, you need to decrease your altitude to this uh, altitude, and you need to fly to this beacon, etc. So, let's see what they do, because EH251, which was our ori or original waypoint, which they, they referred us to is here, so let's, let's give it some time and let's see uh, where we will end up with. Still dark outside, here's some lights, looks like some uh, windmills. So let's enjoy your flight. All right, so again, we're going to, to these uh, waypoints. Uh, we The only buttons we didn't use during the autopilot were the BC button and back course. Um, I think that was the only button. I think we, all, we used the rest of them. Oh no, the approach button, but that one will be used uh, let's say in this flight a little bit later. So the altitude switched on. So fine. And you can also say, okay, hey, I want to do this, and then we'll go by default. We'll go to pit, right? So the pitch rate. Uh, you can switch this one on, 
which will turn it on to uh, 2600 feet um, initially it might say FLC when it's climbing but eventually it will go to, uh, to uh, the alt and then the uh, altitude mode so what we need to do and that's something you need to keep in mind is uh, to ensure that we can intercept the, uh, the localizer we need to change the CDI to uh, VOR1 because that's the uh, radio which we set here right set to RRS um, so that's something you need to keep in mind we're not gonna do it right now because we're, we're too far away we're gonna do it um, if we're pretty close to the airport So let's see if we can already see a part of Rotterdam. I think we're a little bit too far away from it because Rotterdam is, say, here. There's some some industry around it, right? So which we will probably be able to see. We're almost at the uh, EH two five one fix. that on the left side right but also on the, uh, on the left side you can see it in this small corner or you can use the right screen I prefer to use the right one a little bit larger then use this one as the, the compass because during the night flight you can can look at the outside but you're not seeing everything right normally when you're you're flying I would say during the day you can see interesting things you can enjoy the nice sceneries around Says okay, hey. Maintain present heading and says okay, hey. The maintain the present heading and altitude, so we can stay on the same altitude. Uh, runway uh, six approach via SD transition clear to SCD. Well, that's what we just said, uh, did, my friend. So we're gonna maintain confirm. present heading and altitude. Expect ILS runway six approach via Sierra Tango Delta transition clear to Sierra Tango Delta Cessna Golf Sierra Alpha. We're gonna fly to EH250. Already something to see here. Not a lot. So what will happen if we expect the ILS, right? So if you expect the ILS and if you, we capture the localizer information, the only thing you need to do is um, push back throttle and then drop the flaps, etc. The altitude will be arranged, automatically arranged by the, uh, the autopilot. So that's cool. So you don't have to pay attention to that. Uh, don't expect that you can fully land automatically, at least not with this just now. Uh, because you need to still need to do uh, the last piece manually. Let me see. Uh, see some nice stuff there, but we can't see it. So for now, I would say. Coming close to the city of Rotterdam. And here you can see it changed, right? So in some cases you need to do it manually, but it looks like it, in this case it already changed it for us. So it changed it to uh, the CDI to log one. And once that's done you can see a few things right this letter has turned to green you can see the bars here uh, you can see the uh, localizer if we're approaching it correctly and uh, uh, idly it should be somewhere here in the middle uh, so what you can do now is you can 
decide to press the approach button although we're still a little bit far away from the airport it's uh, still uh, for 4.6 um, miles flying but we, we can give it a try but officially you can you need you can only switch it on once you got would say permission to land hoping that I already got the permission or already got someone who said hey you need to contact the tower because I also were officially making a legal landing right so you need to get confirmation that you can land once you got it then it's fine so let's hit the approach button and see what happens You can see the uh, letters GS are now appearing here, which stands for Glidescope. And you can see in front of it the lock from Localizer. Maybe we were a little bit too early. too early because here's the other uh, fix it doesn't look like much is happening right? so not sure what it's doing right I think we we need to declare this missed approach because the air the airport was here so for some reason the ILS didn't pick it up so let's see what we're gonna do is we probably need to declare it on missed approach and then we need to uh, uh, make the correct turns so let's decrease the altitude Whoop. to 2000 and now it says hey we can contact Wilson Airport for landing not sure what's going on tonight. Probably, probably something weird going on. Tower on one one eight decimal two zero five Cessna Golf Sierra Alpha. Rotterdam Tower Cessna Alpha Sierra X Ray Golf Sierra Alpha two miles northeast inbound ILS runway six. So it still wants us to do the approach on runway six. So what we're going to do in this case is we're going to use the um, nav mode. Cleared ILS runway six approach Sesame Golf Sierra Alpha. Let's use the heading mode. So let's first fly a little bit here. And then we're gonna make a turn here right and then we're gonna approach again from uh, Echo Hand Echo Hotel to fifty. Right, that's one of the nice things, right? If you want to use the heading, you can simply press the button. Uh, and then we will continue to fly here. And then we're gonna make a left turn and then approach via EH250. So you see that using the, the ILS is not always that straightforward. I must, I must confess that 
don't know what happened with the autopilot uh, today it gave us a hard time So what you see is here you see the, 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 the green line of the localizer is uh, far to the uh, left which means that uh, compared to the position of the airplane the uh, waypoint is much more to the left side. So ideally it should be in the middle and if you're in the middle then you're fine right then you can make a correct approach and you can, can land correctly on the, uh, on the runway. So let's, let's continue to fly like this. So you can see the lights in from Rotterdam Airport there. That's a runway 24, right? What we want to make or landing on a runway uh, 6. So let's keep an eye on the tools. See that now we switched to the heading, right? Instead of the nav mode, it's now switched to heading mode. So it's always what when you don't know which mode you activated, look at the top of the screen and it will tell you. Yeah, now it said hey, we're cleared to land. So I'm gonna say okay. Clear to land runway six we're fine. Alpha. Come on, friends, we need to make some turns. See that it's already detected the glide scope, right? Because the, the or did it at least capture the signal of the glide scope because it shows shows it here. And now the waiting has begun. Because we're gonna fly to here and then make the make a left turn. EH 250 and then make a left turn again to EHRD. And that's also what it says here, right? So we need to go to this one and then. We can uh, <coughs> land on uh, runway 06. So nice flight, nice evening. The wind is not that hard. And you can see that this one already starts to climb, right? So we're almost at the correct altitude. So probably the issue was that we were not instructed to go down to 2000 feet. And in that case, it won't be able to intercept the channel or the, the localizer uh, correctly. And since it can't uh, find the localizer correctly, it can't find the correct uh, glide scope. And then you're, well, I would say, kind of screwed because if it can't find the uh, correct light scope, then uh, it won't know which altitude it needs to follow, etc. So we need to turn a little bit more to the. I'm 
wasn't gonna make a full turn right so See that it already captures it, so now it captures it correctly, right? So you can see that it captured the glide scope correctly because now it switched to green. It's doing its final changes here. You can already see the airport, and this is different, right? So now we it correctly captured the glide scope. It switched instead of the white. Uh, glide scope which was standing here I think switched to green and the localizer is also green so now we're fully set to make the approach so we're gonna reduce uh, throttling a bit and to decrease the uh, speed we're gonna drop the flaps to full and the rest will happen almost automatically I say almost because probably we need to make a small adjustment here because you can see that it doesn't land 100% to the runway of its own. But so we probably need to make a small adjustment here. So let's now focus on, uh, on this, right? We're not focusing on the tools anymore. The other thing you need to keep an eye on is the speed. So we're going to reduce speed a little further because we're going a little bit too fast. What I've learned already from a few videos uh, which I've watched is that you can better be too fast than too slow. does pretty well right so you might expect that it was a little bit too far to the to the to the left according to uh, to this piece but it's I think it's aligning pretty well uh, reduce throttling even more And here you can see the poppy lights, right? We discussed them in a previous how-to. So this means that we're too high. So let's help the autopilot a bit because of, I also think we will miss it. And now we're far too high. So now we need to make corrective actions. You can see that ILS, it works, but I think it has to do with the, the landing approach which we took was not ideal so um, that's something you need to uh, need to keep in mind that if you don't make the correct approach then ILS will not work 100% test already a few times with uh, with other uh, with with other airfields and also with Rotterdam yesterday I think and, and ILS worked worked okay so Keep that in mind that you might need to take a manual control over from the uh, the Send airport the to the Alpha turn next from the airport from the airplane, of course. So here you can see we're now are instructed to move away from the runway. So let's do that. So here also ends the how to how to use the autopilot uh, we discussed most functionality i think even more functionalities than we were uh, planning to do um, also the, the the flight plan was a little bit different than i expected i think the error we made was uh, by pushing the uh, or when, when setting the approach too fast 
Uh, so that's the lesson for an also for me again. Don't press, don't press that button too fast and simply follow the instructions from the uh, air traffic control because else won't pick up the uh, uh, else won't pick up okay uh, the the approach you, you want to take which will uh, result in I would say almost a missed approach or it was not almost it was a missed approach. Um, also, one thing you need to keep in mind is you need to switch off uh, the director and all the other functionalities of the autopilot, else the the airport or the airplane might start to uh, try to, to, I would say, go into go airborne again. Um, so, thanks for watching this episode. Uh, if you like this video, then consider to uh, press the like button. If you've got got questions or you want to make comments then use the comment box below the video and um, if you like to see more of these videos or stay up to date about new videos i'm posting then consider subscribing to my channel uh, thanks for watching and uh, see you next time